So basically, I uh, got involved in the company and within seven months, got to six figures. Got to six figures within that company and by the time I graduated, I was actually able to graduate retired. Does that kind of make sense? My, my degree was in psychology, but my psychology degree wasn't going to afford me the income I was already making in that company. Does that make sense? So it didn't make sense to really use my degree and get a job. So I left school and I was this retired college student, 22 years old, speaking all over you know, the United States and getting accolades for this company. I was executive director. I was the youngest person at that position. And then one of the things I noticed was after I hit the top position, after I got to 100 grand, then I kind of went back down to like 20, 30 grand. Then I went to zero. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, how did I get the success this far and then I'm back down to zero. You know, just financial difficulties, you know, telling people the check was in the mail, you know, back when we used to mail bills in, and you know, that whole story. You know what I mean? Just not really getting ahead like I felt I should. I said, there's something, there's something special about me. I was able to do something that most people didn't do, but I wasn't able to maintain it. I wasn't able to sustain it. What, what happened? So I started studying. I started getting into personal development. I started getting into, you know, self-help and just Tony Robbins. Just, and I really wanted to understand what, how did I get, how did I drop so fast? And then I noticed I would go back up. And then I will come back down. I will go back up. I will come back down. I mean, this was a roller coaster. This was a roller coaster all in my 20s. And that company I was in, it finally shut down. And, uh, you know, they got bought out. So I went and joined another company. Hit the top position in that company. And two months later, I was back down to zero. You notice a pattern? Does that kind of make sense? There was a pattern developing, and I didn't know what it was. And I was trying to find it in these books. And all they were telling me was, you know, stay positive and work harder and get a mentor. And all that stuff seemed great. But I wasn't able to really put it together to have success in my life. I wasn't able to read, you know, glean the information that I was getting from these books and apply it into my life. You know, I was reading all the stories about everybody else that was working for them. But I couldn't get it to work for me. But long story short, after you know getting involved with some companies, once again, got involved in another company about three years ago. And this was going on since I was 18. Get involved in the company, have success, go down to zero. Got involved in this company, who knows the story. First three months, made over 20 grand. First three months. Then all of a sudden, and this wasn't even my fault. This let me know that this law of attraction thing, there was something to it. Because I was just attracting this stuff. I didn't go down to zero, well, it wasn't my fault. What happened was the company closed its doors. So I was, you know, $10,000 a month went down to zero overnight. And I just bought a nice house in Atlanta. And after my income went away overnight, I couldn't pay for it. So within, I would say, four to five months of that company shutting down and my income going down, I was getting foreclosed. And this wasn't the first time in Atlanta that I was getting foreclosed from a house that I had bought previously. This happened before in Fulton County. So I was pretty familiar with how Fulton County and the foreclosure process went. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was okay, I got, you know, three weeks before my court date and then, you know, the judge is gonna give me two weeks. I knew the system because I had been through it. Getting kicked out of a house. You know, so long story short, the second house I got kicked out of, I said, well, this is Fulton County. You know, I went to court already. The judge is going to give me about 30 days to, you know, move and get all my stuff together. The cops are going to come. The sheriffs are going to come and say, hey, listen, you need to be out within seven days, blah, blah, blah. So I was expecting that. And I was very, very nervous. You know, I, I was trying to read books and figure out what was going on and think positive, but they were still coming. The positive thinking wasn't really working. I hadn't worked for 15 years up until that point. So I heard a noise, when I heard a noise. I was on a very quiet street, it's a nice subdivision, so you can hear the cars that ride by. I was very in tune to cars that driving by because I was looking for the sheriffs to come to tell me when my seven days was. When the sheriffs came, they pulled up in my driveway. I came outside, I said, listen guys, you, you know, you put the note on my, my door and told me I got seven days. They said, no, the, the, the movers are here, you, they're, you know, you need, need to be out now. I said, no, 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 y'all, this is Fulton County, y'all give us seven days. He said, no, that's a courtesy. We don't have to give you seven days. You need, they're coming now. If you got stuff in there, it's gonna be out as long within the next couple hours. I said, no, 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 y'all supposed to give me seven days. He said, no, we, sir. Matter of fact, you can't even go in, this house is seized from now. And they actually, I had to talk them into letting me go in and at least getting some stuff that I wanted to get 
that I felt the movers wouldn't steal because all they do is come in, throw your stuff in a whatever, and throw it on the lawn. And that's what happened. Long story short, second time, 30, I don't know what I was, 34 years old, up at the top of the mountain, giving talks all over the world, and now I'm getting thrown out of my house again. And I was just devastated for about 20 minutes. And one of the things I tell you about mindset is you'll learn superstars, warriors, you'll learn that when adversity hits, they're, they're, you know, they, they get knocked down. They go cry in the corner, but they don't cry in the corner for long. Normally it's an hour or two, whereas it's a week or two, right? See, that, that's the difference. Everybody has disappointments. Everybody has things happen that they wasn't planning on happening. But how long do you stay down and soak in it? You know, so I was out there, I was crying. You know, I didn't know, I, I knew some stuff was gonna be missing because they, you know, these guys just didn't look like they were the type to just take my stuff and put it nicely on the couch. They, they wasn't them, those type of guys. So I was like, I, I, who knows what's gonna be left? Who knows what's in their pockets while they're moving? It was just, a, I was just having so many emotions going through my mind. But I decided at that time, I said, you know what? This has never happened here. This, 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 this sucks. And you know, we're, we're, we're programmed. We, we live our life most of the time based on our upbringing, based on how we were brought up. How many times do you think growing up my dad got evicted or got foreclosed on that I saw growing up? How many times? Twice. How many times did I have you, I told you I got evicted? Or four, twice. I saw my dad, I remember teenage years, right before I went to college was the second time, but I remember in middle school, we had to move twice. Sheriffs came in and packed our stuff up. It was just, pro that, that's what I was programmed to do. I was programmed to get in over my head, to not be able to pay my bills, and to get thrown out of the house, because that's what I saw growing up. That's exactly what I had taken on growing up. So I said, something has to change right now. Something has to stop. And after, you know, I basically got all my stuff, they had all my stuff, you know, on, out in the garage. And it's funny because I look at the pictures now and I get a little emotional, but I'll show you the pictures one day. They took my library, because I had one of the rooms was a library. I had like a thousand some books, audios. They took all that stuff and just threw it. It was all thrown in, in the garage. I'm sorry, in the driveway. They had Jim Rome, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins. All my stuff was just laid out on the, on, on, in the driveway. All this stuff that says I, wasn't supposed, I was supposed to be smart enough not to be in this situation again. <laughs> all these books I've been reading, all these tapes, all these darn seminars I've been going to, and again, I'm getting foreclosed on and got my stuff thrown out. So I'm like, you know, something has to change here. So I decided that was never gonna happen again. And I was, uh, I was homeless for about two years after that point, two years. I was in and out, you know, sleeping in my car. This goes to show you the level I was at. I'm in a Jaguar X-Type with nowhere to go. <laughs> nowhere to go. This beautiful car with nowhere to go. I had to sleep in it. I had to, you know, sneak into the gym, LA Fitness, to take showers. I had to go into courtyard Marriott's and residence inns and Holly Inn Selects for their free breakfast in the morning. Anybody know about that? You're supposed to be a guest. <laughs> <laughs> they eat the breakfast, but they didn't know if I was a guest. Now, sometimes they asked, and I might have told them something that wasn't very true, but that went on for about a year, year and a half. And it's funny because that was in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta. I had been in Atlanta up until that point since I was 18. And right before, it's funny, I came out, I, I had never been to Denver when I was in Atlanta. But before that had actually happened, you know, I was thinking, you know, what do I need to do? I need to come with the money. I need to do something. I don't watch TV much, but I remember I had CNBC on in the background. And there was a special, a documentary on the recreational legalization of marijuana in Colorado. Now, that's, I had never smoked. I had never been a drug dealer, even coming from New York in the projects. I just never <laughs> wanted to, you know, all my friends that were drug dealers, they had a lot of money, but they were either dead, so they couldn't spend it, or they were in jail and they couldn't spend it. So my thing was, well, they got all this money, but they're not allowed to spend it because they're not here or they're locked up, so I don't want to go that route. It looks great, the lifestyle looks great, but I never went down that route, never smoked weed. But I said, you know what? There was something that said ding, ding in my mind. Once again, mindset. It's all about how you think. I had the background, I was just listening to it. 
and they gave the math of marijuana. They said it takes X amount of dollars to grow a pound of marijuana, and that pound is sold for X amount of dollars. When I heard that, I said, wait, 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 wait. you know you got that little DVR thing? I reminded that, I said, what'd they say? A pound of marijuana is grown for this, and it's sold for this. I said, I am going out to Denver tomorrow. Didn't know anybody in Denver. Didn't know where I was gonna stay, didn't know where I was gonna do, didn't know where I was gonna go, but that's my mindset. I said, I gotta get in that industry. It's legal now too? I said, I have to get in, I have to do something about that. I don't have no money, didn't have any money, but a friend of mine worked at the airport, he gave me a buddy pass. I said, I need to go out to Denver tomorrow. He said, the buddy passes work like a meeting. He said, yeah. I said, I need to go out to Denver. Why? I said, I don't know. But I'm just going out there. Long story short, I got in, you know, in touch with somebody, got in touch with somebody, got in touch with somebody, got in touch with somebody, and I was able to use somebody else's money to invest in the marijuana business. And that's what brought me out to Denver. Now, what I didn't tell you was when I first started coming out to Denver, they didn't know the situation I was in, my investment, the partners who I invested with. They had no idea. They looked at me as this, I had, once again, it's all about how you present yourself. They looked at me as this big shot investor from Atlanta, because that's what I told them I was. I just knew that I wanted to get into the business and that the money was out there. I just needed to find it. I didn't have the money, but I knew it was out there. See, that's what I said, mindset. Somebody says, I don't have the money. You don't need the money. Have you made a decision that you're gonna do what you said you're gonna do to need the money? Once you make that decision, then the money comes. See, that's what you have to really understand how that works. I know a lot of you may not understand, but I understood that. I had listened to all these tapes for years. Even though I wasn't having a success in my life, I understood some basic principles, some basic foundation. I knew that if I wanted to do something, even if I didn't have the money, the money would come from somewhere. And that's exactly what happened. But once I started coming out here, and we was getting a deal together, I would rent a car, and I would sleep in the car. Because I didn't, I didn't have enough money for a hotel. Like I said, they didn't, I couldn't tell them that. They were like, where the hell are you gonna get half a million dollars from, Bernie, you, know, you, you sleeping in the car. They didn't know I slept in the car. You know what I mean? I, was just, I knew somehow this was going to happen. Somehow this was going to work out. I didn't know how. And that's the thing. You won't know how. You just have to have the understanding that things will work out. And long story short, that was, I first started coming out here in Denver two and a half years ago. When I first came out here, sleeping in the cars, one of my friends, who I made out here because I didn't know anybody out here when I first moved out here. They let me sleep in a warehouse when they found out I was sleeping in the car. They had a little warehouse that they had, a little couch in there. They let me sleep in there. It's like, I know things are tough, man. You know, if you ever need to, it's cold out here in Denver in the winter. You're sleeping in the car. I mean, just, you know. So things worked out, but I was still not in a very good position in the reality. I was mentally because I knew that somehow, I knew the promise I made to myself the second time I got thrown out of that second house. I said, this is never happening again. I know my situation doesn't look good now, but something, I, 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 I'm focusing on my future. I'm not worried about what's happening now. I'm focusing on my future. Guys, fast forward two years later, that business is doing phenomenal. I just bought a $2 million house on a golf course in Lone Tree. Yay. Oh, you live in Lone Tree? Oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that, I appreciate that. But guys, I'm not saying that to impress you, but to impress upon you where you can go and where you can come from. Because you're looking at a guy that first came out here, I didn't have anything to my, I had a negative net worth. A negative net worth. Less than two years later, a multiple seven figure net worth. And it's all from my mindset. It has nothing to do with any type of skill set, any type of particular thing that I did is how you think. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. It irks me when I, go to, when I go into a situation or I'm listening to somebody train or teach, and they're teaching about, you know, 30 or 40 different techniques for success. You know, there's a guy on, on, on the internet, on YouTube and stuff. I, I love him to death. I follow him, you know, but it's 67 steps to success. And I'm like, it doesn't take 60, what the, 67, it's a lot of, just a few things. A few things you can master to take control of your life. It doesn't take 67 things. When I looked at the 67 things, all of them were really the same thing. 
you can really group them one on one thing. But my point is, it's not a, it's not a lot. It's not a lot you have to learn. It's not a big manual you have to get. You don't have to take a two week course. I mean, it, it's it's very very simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. It may not be easy, but it's simple. What you want to do is you want to do what I did. You want to figure out how does this stuff work because I've always been a curious guy. You know, we talked about the, um, you know, personalities. It's funny because when I looked at this, at the actual, you know, outline, I thought I would, you know, my girlfriend would tell me I'm in the, I'm dominant, but uh, <laughs> I, I didn't get deep based on, you know, where we went at. But anyway, um, you know, you have to understand where you're at, what type of person you are, because a lot of times when we, when we want to be successful and we want to do certain things, we want to learn certain skills, we're taught that, you know, this is what you need to do. This is how to get to where you need to go. This is how you write your goals, blah, blah, blah. They didn't back up. This is what happened with me. This is what happened when I, you know, mentor with Bob, and me and Mark, that's how we met. Bob teaches us how to, first of all, examine where we are first. That, that, that's the most important thing. See, if you don't know where you are, it doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter if you want to get to seven figures, eight figures, if you want to get to financial freedom, whatever that means for you, that's great. But if you don't know where you're at right now, it won't matter where you're going. What type of person are you? What type of habits do you have? How do you think? What's your mindset? Those are going to be important because those are going to have to change for you to get to where you want to go because I'm here to, I'm here to you know, splash a little water in your face. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. If you don't change, your situation isn't going to change. It may improve temporarily, but it's not going to change. You're going to be just like me, and I'm sorry to say that. A lot of people don't realize you're either growing or dying. There's something called the law of opposites, the law of polarity. Everything has an opposite. There is no in-between. In-between is a myth. There's no such thing as stagnation. You're either growing or you're dying. A tree. Is a tree stagnant?